Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about semantic maps for instruction. Well, these type of programs we use um, on the student side for them to better visualize ideas, concepts, and relationships to improve writing proficiency and to plan and organize uh, projects. Of course, they can also be used for things like decoding, reading uh, assignments, etc. On the instructional side of it, on your side of it as the teacher, they can be used for, for diagramming, creative concept maps, providing templates and worksheets to your students, and being able to connect to the internet um, because we can hyperlink within this type of uh, program. As you see, using these types of programs in the classroom, we can accomplish a lot of the, um, the net standards for students. So for instance, if we were to implement one of these in instruction in a social studies class, it would uh, help students understand um, and organize information so they can draw conclusions from, uh, from historical movements you know, and relate their knowledge from uh, past to present day issues. So for instance, if we wanted students to contrast and compare um, the similarities and differences between the causes of the American Revolution and the causes of the French Revolution, this graphic format, this very visual format, allows them to try to map it out and make sense of that process and compare the processes. They can also uh, map out things that are like these, which is a, a hierarchy. Um, this is the, a representation, a visual representation of the different branches of the, uh, the U.S. government. So again, if you look at this in, in this format, it's probably easier for students to decode something like this and make sense of it than perhaps a totally text-based document. In mathematics, we can have students uh, understand processes better. Um, so for instance, if we want students to work through a problem systematically using different categories, we can build those categories as separate boxes or separate bubbles as a flow process for them to understand what state, what stage need, leads to the next and what information goes in each stage. In language arts, we can have students um, use this type of program for pre-writing activities. So what tr traditionally we, we use as brainstorming, web and clustering as pre-writing, uh, but we can also use as post-reading activities for comprehension, such as depicted in this uh, concept map here, which is a character web of uh, of the characters, the main ca characters in, in Huckleberry Finn. We can also use it in writing for students to, to understand a process. Um, for instance, this is the, you know, the, the steps involved in writing a persuasive essay. So students would be able to kind of fill in the blanks, especially for students with, um, with some forms of, of um, disabilities that don't allow them to efficiently put together the, the semantics of, of sentences and paragraphs. Um, this would help them as a scaffolding behind the scenes. In science, which traditionally has been model-based, um, students can use these to, to create visual diagrams, reveal patterns, interrelationships, and interdependencies. So it allows students to, to reduce things from very complex information into smaller parts to be able to process items. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do is um, you're going to create a semantic or cognitive map based on um, an article that I've put in the content folder in Angel for this module that relates to organic and conventional farming. You're going to map out the similarities and differences of those, those two processes and you're going to use uh, Bubbles, Bubble US, which is a Web 2.0 online based technology for you to, to use the concept map 